Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to do a review of the Zeiss Otis 85mm Planar T f1.4 lens. I'm reviewing a ZE or a Canon mount today. When you review a lens that comes with this kind of price tag, and of course the hype associated with this new Otis line, it creates a whole new set of expectations, and I approached it with a mixture of interest and also some skepticism, probably like many of you. How can a 85mm lens be worth nearly $4,500? And so, let's jump in and find out whether or not this lens price tag is justified. The mental comparison that I came up with when I began to review this lens as, as the review period progressed was very similar to when I made the transition to full frame camera bodies. At first you, you wonder can, can they justify the greater bulk and price tag that is associated with them and at first you're highly critical of the images that you take wondering well is that much different than what I was taking before. But I found when I used a full frame camera body that over time I began to appreciate the greater nuance that was there and uh, little things like the depth of field and the, the richness of the color and also the way that the files behave when I process them later. And over time I came to a realization that there was no comparison, that the full frame image quality was so much better than the crop sensors I'd used before. Unfortunately for me, I came to the same kinds of conclusion while using the Otis lens. This is the first one of this series that I have had the privilege of testing before and uh, it unfortunately has made every other lens that I've used before seem a little bit wanting by comparison. It's the little things that get you and I, as I said in my written review, you're not going to be able to appreciate this lens by firing off a, a few frames with it in a camera store somewhere because you're not going to get the full nuance and depth that is there. But what Zeiss has managed to do is to create a, an optic that works in every kind of environment. Over the years, I, I have some familiar spots that I've become accustomed to going out and shooting in. And so, as I go to those familiar places, I have an expectation of, of what's going to work and what's not going to work there. I found that as I shot in those familiar places, that this lens opened up a whole new realm of possibilities. Never before have I used a prime that is so usable wide open. I find that many prime lenses are optimized for a certain focal range, and particularly those that are um, in the, the typical portrait category they will be optimized to where they shoot well often between the ranges of 4 feet out to about 12 feet and it seems like they produce some of their best results but if you go beyond um, that focus range out beyond 12 feet towards infinity that's often when they start to fall apart the image quality just doesn't hold up at greater distances when they're resolving finer detail at a further distance and that's when you, you really begin to notice things like the chromatic aberrations and images appear soft and uh, have show the loss of micro contrast and even some of the better um, prime lenses they still exhibit some of that I found even with the Sig Sigma 50 millimeter f1.4 art series which has great optics but if I tried to shoot it wide open and shoot more at landscape distances when I would zoom into the the lens itself I could see that bit of softness where the texture didn't really pop not so with the Otis lens. The, this 85mm Otis, the best comparison I can make is to a good macro lens. Macro lenses have the ability to really make details and textures pop, but they excel at very close fo focus distances. If you move a bit further out, they don't continue on that same kind of amazing resolution to the same degree. But with the Otis, it doesn't matter where you are in the, the focus distance range be it close or all the way out to infinity, it continues to resolve with great contrast, textures popping, detail there. The resolution holds up everywhere across the focus range. And that is, in my experience, entirely unique to any lens like this that I've used before. And because of that, it opens up whole new realms of possibility for the kind of situations you can shoot in and the kind of aperture values that you can use in these kind of situations. And it was amazing to me to be able to shoot, um, say, a landscape at an infinity focus range where still all the details were finally rendered even wide open f1.4. One image in particular blew my mind when I got home and I reviewed it full size. I'd shot is out in the middle of a snowstorm and shot a landscape with some distant tamaracks and uh, 
I shot it at f1.4. I, of course, I shot off a few other frames at more typical apertures. But what blew my mind is when I looked at that f1.4 image and found that the distant needles on the tamaracks were resolved and the, the dried plants in the field and that narrow plane of focus, they were beautifully resolved. And it, it just blew my mind because it created a very unique image where the foreground is blurred, almost like using a tilt shift lens, except for with a little more field curvature um, than a, a tilt shift lens. And it created something that was unique and beautiful and has become one of the favorite images that I've taken this year. And so to be able to do that, and it didn't matter what the setting was, whether the, the lighting conditions were bright and harsh, it seemed like the Otis did a better job of, of maintaining balance between shadows and highlights without any visible chromatic aberrations. And of course, having an incredible sharpness. Some lenses I find are optimized for sharpness, but then the out of focus area, the transition to what we call the Boca region, suffers as a result of it. Not so with the Otis. It has, uh, it has amazing drawing as you move beyond the, the focus range into the out of focus region. Optically, there's, there's nothing more that you could ask for that I'm aware of. It is sharp from wide open and not just sharp in the middle, it's sharp going out towards the edges. It does have a bit of a perimeter shading or vignetting, but it's, it's not widely pronounced at all. In fact, I haven't even bother, bothered creating the standard profile in Lightroom for it because there's, there's so few things to correct, it just seems an unnecessary step. As far as fuel use goes, there is no chromatic aberrations that are apparent using this lens. The sharpness is impressive throughout the range, and, uh, and so it is, it's an amazing instrument to use optically. Let's look at the build here for a moment. Uh, first of all, this is not a small lens. It is far heavier than any other and bulkier than any other 85mm option out there. And, uh, and so the design itself, as you can see, it has a what I might call a fairly simplistic design. There's not a whole lot of different textures on here. There's a, a matte finish a section, and in between there's a rubberized focus ring, and uh, then a distance window. I understand the practicality of the bright yellow markings on the Otis that uh, they give you optimum um, visibility when you're able to see them even in, in dimmer situations. Uh, that being said, I I'm not crazy about the look. It's for such a, a premium instrument, it seems slightly inelegant to me by comparison. Um, but the lens design, of course, is is very it's it's beautifully made. Um, and this focus ring is the most amazing focus ring I have ever used. And it's really amazing to be able to just use a finger to make fine adjustments for focus and, and to be able to do that with great precision. It the focusing ring is just this is such an easy lens to, to focus, and I understand that not all of you are comfortable maybe with a manual focus lens, but um, this kind of spoil, will spoil you for other manual focus lenses because it focuses so beautifully and so accurately. It's large, it's thick, it's heavy. The lens hood also it has a, a flocked interior, um, and you'll see that it clips on, and it really is designed to where it just kind of continues the overall flare of the lens. It almost looks like one piece when you have the lens hood attached, and most of the time I just keep it like this, even um, for, for carry. It has a, a very large front element. It is an 86 millimeter um, front filter thread, which is a bit of an odd size. It's probably unlikely that you already have an 86 millimeter filter of any kind. But of course, if you can afford this lens, you can probably afford a front filter for it. And so when it comes to weight, it's certainly on a, a camera body like the uh, 60 that I'm using for test. Um, it's, it's a little bit front heavy on the 6D, but of course the way that it's designed, it's, it's very easy to support and that's another nice thing about the way that the lens hood is integrated because the lens hood actually creates a very nice place to support the lens and of course because of the very nicely moving um, focus ring, it enables you to be able to easily support the lens and focus at the same time. I found this lens really a joy to, to use out in the field. It's not particularly light, but at the same time, um, when you compare it to carrying a telephoto lens, it's not overly heavy either. You will find, however, that this weight is, is closer to, say, a 70 to 200 f2.8 zoom than what it is to most of the primes uh, that you're accustomed to in the standard range. Zeiss has, has used nothing but premium materials in this lens, and it's apparent in the, the amazing optics, it's apparent in the build quality. This is another lens that is built to last for multiple generations.
Now just a moment on the, um, the lens construction itself. Zeiss lenses are manual focus only. However, they do have electronic contacts. For those of you that are accustomed to shooting autofocus lenses, know that in operation, the only thing that's different about this lens is the fact that you're manual focusing. All of your typical controlling of your iris, your shutter speed, etc., all is controlled through the camera body, just like any other lens. One final note on the build quality, the actual lens cap, I've, I've complained a bit about the flimsiness of some of the Zeiss uh, lens caps in the past. Um, this is a, an improved design, it's a much more robust feeling than others I've used. Also unique to me was to find that even the, the rear lens cap is, is unique for the Otis line and they have a, a very smooth looking design that matches the overall design of the Otis lens. I recently lauded Sigma for the very nice protective case that they include with their lenses. I'm a little disappointed that Zeiss doesn't include something similar with such a premium priced optic. That being said, one thing that Zeiss does include that is unique to the Otis series is this very big box for an 85 millimeter lens. Now, inside the protective sleeve, there is a case that is really designed almost more like a display case slash protector and you can see that it's got customized foam inserts and so it, it does provide a very secure place to store the lens even I would say as a travel option because of the sturdiness of the box that it comes in that uh, this is a, a decent protection option and one you might actually use because something this beautiful does deserve to be displayed while you're not using it. And so to the the big question is this lens worth the money? Of course, that's a question that ultimately only you can answer because it is a it's, a it's a massive amount of money. I like the point, however, that Brian Carnathan made in his review of this lens. He noted that many photographers are willing to spend this level of money and beyond for wildlife photography. And he argues, and I believe correctly, that human subjects are surely as deserving as this. And so, if you are looking to do high-end portraiture, this lens is going to probably out-resolve any camera that you have and give you medium format type quality results and of course when you begin to look at medium format lenses and their prices all of a sudden it makes the the price seem a little bit a little more relative to the actual value that you're getting I'm not aware of any lens that I've used to this point that can compete with the optical quality of this lens. And so if you are looking for ultimate optical quality and the ability to shoot at basically whatever aperture you want in any kind of setting it's hard to beat this lens. The image quality is simply amazing. And the more that I used it, the more that I appreciated that. Is it worth the money? I have to say that by the end of my review period, I've begun to do a little bit of mental math of what I would need to sell to acquire this lens. Because put simply, this is a lens that I would want to shoot a lot. It is amazing and it produces amazing results. And so if you are willing to use a manual focus lens, if you're looking for premium image quality, this is at the very top of the heap. I have not used any other lens that compares optically. If I were to nitpick, I would say I would like a little bit more maximum magnification, but the truth of the matter is, is that this lens is already at the top of its class. Um, there is a slight bit of vignetting, but it's no more pronounced than other lenses in its class, and in fact less so compared to many others. Put simply, this lens has excelled in every shooting condition that I have put it through. I've tried things that I wouldn't try even try with other lenses and have found that it performs great in every one of those situations. And so if you're valuing versatility and the ability to use whatever aperture you want in any kind of setting, this lens is impossible to beat in my experience. And so other than its weight, which is hefty, and its price, which is heftier still, there's really nothing else to, to knock against this lens. It is quite simply, as I set out to do, it is the finest optics in the world. And it's been a privilege to get to use it. And my hope is that someday that this lens will be in my own personal collection. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you haven't already, please subscribe below. And more reviews will be coming your way very soon. Thanks.